Hello and welcome back once again to the new series, North Korean Film Reviews. Today we are going to be getting stuck into a traffic controller on Crossroads, a 1986 DPRK production that goes into the lives of the traffic ladies of Pyongyang. Very interesting and a very good insight into the world of these pretty famous ladies. Before we do that, I'm going to say thank you to my patrons as always. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Clark, James, Charles, Alex, Simon, Masaki and James Hickman. Thank you so much. And without further ado, let's have a look at a traffic controller on crossroads. <laughs> Similar with A Flower Girl, the intro starts with a view of the protagonists, this time a traffic controller's, life, while song plays in the background and adds to the narrative. During this intro, we see various sights in Pyongyang, as well as the trolleybuses and trams. Unlike A Flower Girl, however, this film is a lot faster in general, and also a lot shorter. It's only an hour long, and for this reason it's made it into my top three films to watch to start off with. It's quick, fun, informative, and you get a good look into the streets of Pyongyang, as well as the lives of traffic controllers and the lives of working women in Pyongyang. The first scene begins in the office of the traffic controllers. If you listen carefully, you can hear in the way they speak to each other their respective rankings. This is an important part of Korean culture, both in the north and the south. One of the traffic controllers refers to the other as Dong Mu, showing us that they are actually of a higher ranking than the person they are addressing. Dong Mu, by the way, actually means comrade. Traffic controllers in North Korea are famously beautiful, and already at the opening scene in this film does Pride of Appearance take a lead role. <laughs> it's here that the storyline starts to take shape. The parents of the captain traffic controller have bought a fridge, but they have no way to transport it home. They call to the traffic controller's office to borrow a truck, but she's busy and doesn't pick up, so they're left in a bit of a <laughs> They end up running into a driver who she knows from work, and in the end, ask him to take it back to their place for them after his shift. On their way, the driver decides that he's late and drives fast, overtaking on a place that he's not supposed to. And, you guessed it, the traffic controller catches them, blows her whistle and they are forced to pull over. At this point, only the audience is aware of the connection of the two characters. The driver who is helping deliver her mother's fridge home and is therefore late, and the traffic controller who is the daughter of the very same mother. Things from here can only get very interesting. Back at the mother's house, and the family are wondering what happened to their driver and fridge, and why he's late, whilst they're preparing a meal of thanks for him. It's at this point that the traffic controller daughter comes home and hears they have a guest coming. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
호각이라도 빼가고 불고 들었을 것이지. 어, 천문이도. <웃음> 어서 들어가거라. 수고했다. 아니, 누가 와요? 아, 왜 이렇게 차려놓았어요? 어서 옷이랑 갈아입고 저녁 먹어라. 새로 산 세탁기를 실어다 달라고 아는 운전사한테 부탁했는데 어떻게 그냥 보내겠니? 세탁기요? 어머니 그것 때문에 전화를 해댔어요? 어냐. And if you hadn't already, just like the traffic controller, you'll probably now realize where the connection between the two stories lies. <laughs> Soon after, the driver arrives and he is retelling why he's so late. And suddenly the parents realize what's happened. And not long after, the driver realizes too. The driver passes her once again and gets into a bit of a petty mood because she doesn't smile at him as he drives past. <laughs> He even goes and complains to the mother on his work visit and goes so far as to delay his delivery and inform the mother in a pretty passive-aggressive way suggesting that they can't open their shop on time due to her daughter's lack of smile. It's pretty clear that she just hadn't seen him, or indeed doesn't have to smile at him at all. Maybe she's annoyed or embarrassed from the previous meeting. Throughout the film, there are also a few side stories that involve marriage, rhythmic gymnastics, and themes of filial piety, which, again, provide an interesting insight into the North Korean psyche and way of life. The mother reprimands the daughter for the lack of smile, and we start to realize that this is actually the main story, and it's quite bizarre how it's turned into such a big deal. But, again, shows an insight into how much respect and indeed pride take an important role in North Korea society. The traffic controller feels terrible at the trouble that she has caused and has gone to the driver's workplace to set things right. She's clearly deeply troubled by such events. It soon becomes pretty clear what this film is trying to get at with the smile narrative and the petty driver as the other traffic controller ladies start to complain that the traffic controller is being too strict that even people are driving another way to avoid their station. The traffic controller defends her strictness as a heroic act of protecting rules and regulations for the better of the greater good and for the good of the people. So basically, the theme of why it's good to obey laws, despite the fact that many may not understand why they're there. Nega, Indegori Toso is Hunji in Yonte de Nune. Kangs Sorel can now Han Orin Undos Tonga. Uriguogul Lurjina Danimenso. Tatu Gudomi Banet soil. Crundin and Kutte Mada. I think Oringo Mancum crossed it Dagosinga Kamenso. Omdu 
그의 어머니가 서서히 찾아와서 하는 말이 오랜 운전수리라던 남편이 뜻하지 않은 사고로 희생되자 아들이 아버지의 뒤를 잇겠다면서 운전수가 된게 너무도 대견해 그저 웅석발들을만 키웠더니 결국 이렇게 됐다고 하면서 오히려 자식을 잘못 키운 어머니라서 안전원들에게 사지한다고 말을 할때 그때 난 많은 걸 생각했어요 내가 왜 그의 친어머니처럼 친누나처럼 아버지의 뒤를 잇겠다는 그 어린 운전수 동물을 사전에 도와주지 못하고 오늘 이렇게 처리할 수밖에 없었던가 하는 생각으로 말이에요 그런데 이제 또 우리가 인정사정에 못 이겨 결함들을 보고도 못본척 한다면 어떻게 되겠어요? 직장에서 일 잘하는 적경찬 동물한 함철 동물을 또그 어린 운수처럼 만들 게 아닌가 말이에요. 첫상 동물. Of course, what's a DPRK film without a bit of socialist propaganda thrown in? I knew this speech was going somewhere. 법제서에 대한 어른 인식을 가지도록 엄격히 통제하고 꾸준히 일깨워줘서 모두가 자각적으로 지켜나가도록 해야 돼. 규정에 대한 강한 요구는 금옥이나 나 개인의 요구가 아니야. 이것은 바로 인민의 요구야. 우린 이것을 통해서 이 거리의 안녕을 지키고 우리 사회 주제들을 더욱 빛내가야 해. The rest of the film basically wraps up the other narratives and kind of goes a bit slower. The driver from the start commits another offence at the same traffic controller post and she, as the good responsible citizen, decides not to ignore his violations and does indeed fine him again. As the narrative gets a bit slower towards the end, each time it drops it does seem to pick up again as you find yet another instance of the traffic controller women bossing around and telling off the men who keep committing offences. <laughs> this, until suddenly towards the end, the petty man, i.e. driver, realises the error of his ways and is instead thankful for the service the traffic controller women do to DPRK society to keep the streets safe and all is well. And that seems to be the end. A nice little short story rather than an action-packed film with some interesting narratives and a pretty unique insight into Pyongyang and how DPRK society functions. <laughs> So that is the film, A Traffic Controller on Crossroads. A pretty accessible film, even though it's a little bit old. I definitely recommend having a look if you're interested in watching some DPRK films. It's one of the first ones that I watched and I found it really interesting just to gain an insight into the world of the traffic controller, into the world of the lives of DPRK women and just DPRK society in Pyongyang in general. It's very interesting and I'll put a link in the video notes below where you can find this video or indeed where I found it on YouTube. Thanks for watching again and do tune in for next time where we will be discussing something that I think everyone has been waiting for, which is the film Pulgasari, or you know, otherwise known as North Korea's version of Godzilla. It's a big one, it's gonna take me a while and that's why I haven't got around to it yet. Um, but just think, what happens when you take a South Korean director, put them in North Korea, and try and create a kind of Godzilla steel-eating monster. It's a pretty bizarre one. So do make sure to tune in for next time where we will be discussing Pulgasari. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and do feel free to give me any feedback on this new DPRK film review series. I would be very interested to see what your thoughts and comments are um, and let me know if you've seen any of them so far or any others that you want me to review next. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.